Hey everyone, hope you're doing good this week. We are covering chapter five, which is inner VLAN routing. Um, inner VLAN routing uh, is not a new topic to networking, but the way we do it has changed over the years to uh, hopefully save money, um, just as uh, using virtual machines has saved money on physical desktop, tangible physical uh, machines. We can now have a server, one like uh, I always say beefed up server, right? One that has a lot of, of very expensive specs in it, great processor, great amount of RAM, hard drive space, so on and so on. But we have a lot of virtual servers sitting on that one or even desktops um, sitting on that one. Here, uh, we've kind of done the same thing with routing. So we're gonna look at a legacy inner VLAN routing, as you can see here in this picture on the page. This, um, you know, we kind of explained in this scenario. So it says to accomplish inner VLAN communication between PC3 and PC1. So we got PC3, PC1 here. <clears throat> PC1 is obviously in VLAN 10. PC3 is in VLAN 30. We can look at that based off the port assignments we've got on switch 2 and so on. So we know that this line here, FA011, only is carrying VLAN 10. FA018 is only carrying VLAN 20. FA023 only carrying VLAN 30. Okay, we know that from switch to switch, okay, we got trunk links, so we're carrying all VLANs. Okay, but then we got this router involved. This router gets involved because we can communicate between VLANs. So, for instance, PC1 can be in VLAN 10 and still communicate with PC3 in VLAN 30 over there if we involve a router. So it kind of like leaves out of the PC, PC1 network there, which is the 10.1 network or you know 10.0 network. And then it transfers over to PC3, which is VLAN 30 and the 30.0 uh, network, okay? But it's gotta travel up to the router to do so. So if a packet travels uh, from PC3, okay, up to router, so from PC3, up to switch two, okay? in VLAN 30, goes from switch two to switch one, okay, follow my mouse here, and then switch one sends it out of FA04, goes to G01 on R1, okay, that's the default gateway there, so you see that 30.23 address here, it's communicating it at 30.1. <laughs> Router one then sees, oh, your destination is PC1 down there, so I'm gonna send it down G00, which is the 10.1 network for VLAN 10, sends it to switch one, okay, and for and the FA03 interface, then back to switch two, across the trunk, because it can carry any VLAN, and then down to PC1, okay? So finally it gets delivered. If PC1 goes to PC3, same thing, it communicates up to R1, and then it sends it back down to PC3. Now, what do you notice is the issue here? Well, in this diagram, G00 is only carrying the, and then again, this is physical interfaces uh, that you plug a cable into. This G00 is only carrying one VLAN, VLAN 10. G01, only carrying one VLAN, VLAN 30. Who's left out? Well, there's nobody to carry VLAN 20 here. We would have a third cable that we need to connect from switch one to R1 for it to actually carry the VLAN 20 traffic, or it's left out completely. Okay, so the pros here you see it says it does accomplish inter VLAN communication, but the cons are each VLAN in the network needs its own separate dedicated LAN port on the router. This limits the amount of VLANs you can carry because it gets very costly um, and near impossible to find a router with enough LAN ports to support large networks with a lot of VLANs. It is very costly to add a module to a router and you've only got a couple of uh, line cards that you can add, almost like when you add a video card or some other card to the inside of a PC. You've only got so many that you can add. Same thing with a router. So you kind of top out at just a few VLANs. This is the older way to do it. Okay, so question. What did you notice is left out of the above example? Uh, which PC or VLAN has no inner VLAN communication possible? Again, it would be, uh, you know, VLAN 20, PC2, wouldn't have any connectivity. So how do we solve that? There's a new technology, or not new, new, but one that Cisco developed, uh, router on a stick inner VLAN routing. So what happens in this scenario is, you notice we are down to just one cable that connects switch one and R1, and you'll kind of see the functionality of that in a minute. 
PC1 is still in VLAN 10, PC2 is still in VLAN 20, PC3 is still in VLAN 30. Nothing there has changed. None of the port assignments or anything between the switches are still trunking mode. However, you notice that it says trunk here between S1 and R1. Okay, so let's see. It says to accomplish inter VLAN communication here between PC3 and PC1, a packet would travel from PC3 up to switch 2. Okay, remember that's only VLAN 30 traffic. Then it's going to swing it from switch 2 to switch 1. Now, again, here, yes, you could technically go around to switch 3 if there was too much congestion, but that's just this is the shortest path, so we're going to follow that one. So PC3 to switch 2, switch 2 to S1. S1 is going to send it out of FA03 up to G00 on R1. And what we have here are sub interfaces, which actually is a virtual interface. So the physical interface, we just turn it on, don't assign any IP address and information to it. But you notice here we've got sub interfaces configured on R1. So there's a G0 slash 0, which follows the physical port. But then we put this dot 10. That dot 10 means it's only going to carry uh, VLAN 10 traffic because we're going to set it up to do that. Uh, same thing with here, the dot 20 is a virtual or sub interface, only going to carry 20 traffic. 30, the dot 30 is only going to carry 30 uh, VLAN 30 traffic. So it kind of carries all of our VLANs on this one cable here or this one port. So then it'll sort of reroute it down to switch one, switch two, and then over to PC one. Now, what are the advantages here? Well, the pros are it allows inter VLAN communication and fixes the problem of not having enough physical ports for each VLAN because the VLAN interfaces are all virtual. So you can have many, many VLANs here. It is uh, the con, it would be like a more complex configuration than your legacy inter VLAN routing because you're not just simply assigning an IP address to each physical port. You've got a physical port, but all we need to do is turn that on, make sure switch one's in trunking mode, and then we're good to go as long as we configure these correctly. Now there is an encapsulation command that we'll learn that we do have to type in here. <laughs> Uh, so again, there's one additional con, study the diagram above to figure it out. Think about network traffic, movement, flow. The answer is, no matter which PC we're communicating uh, to and from destination to source, no matter what order it is, we all eventually send it up to R1. Now the bad problem is, it is or the good problem, or the good thing is, we've only got one uh, LAN port that we need on R1. Bad part is we've only got one LAN part on port on R1. All traffic is going to be funneled through that one physical port. So hopefully we've got a very fast router that can handle all of that on that one port. So we would want to spend some money to make sure it's, it's fast enough to handle that, as you can see here in our answer. Now the last kind of configuration option that we have out of the three to accomplish inter VLAN routing, and again, you can kind of break down inter VLAN, so between VLANs, outside of our VLAN. Obviously always VLAN 10 can communicate with VLAN 10, but we want to communicate from VLAN 10 to 20 or 10 to 30 or vice versa, right? Here, we actually eliminate the router altogether. And what this device is, this symbol, we haven't seen it before, is a layer three switch. So remember, in our OSI model, layer two was where switching took place. Okay, That's where all this stuff is involved with, with VLANs. But then we involve a router, which is a layer three device. A layer three device in routing is only concerned with IP addressing. Okay, So when we involve a router, it allows us to communicate between different VLANs. Well, here, we're actually going to have a, a layer three switch, which is actually operating as a switch and a router all at the same time. So to accomplish this, we wouldn't even need a router. To accomplish this, the, the inter VLAN communication between PC3 and PC1 will leave PC1 in VLAN 30 to switch to, then switch, it sends it up to switch one, and switch one will receive the packet on its physical interface, but it'll, it'll also be on interface VLAN 30. It then sends it out to interface VLAN 10 without needing to involve a router at all, so it just sends it back down to PC1. The pros, it involves one less device, so no router involved, just a layer 3 switch, which means it should be a little faster, less latency, it doesn't have to go another place.
Con is layer three switches are very expensive. So they are much more expensive than a regular router or a switch would be. So you have to build that into your budget here. It can accomplish the same things, but it's a little more costly. So you can kind of compare the two here, a layer two switch versus a layer three switch by uh, putting those devices into Amazon or your Google just to see what a layer three switch would cost with a lot of ports on it, okay? Now, configuring router on a stick in VLAN routing, this is an overview of the commands. You will practice these in your lab assignments, and we've got videos for that for Chapter 5. Interface G00, no shutdown. Again, that's configuring on the router. That physical interface needs no IP addressing at all. Then we configure our sub-interfaces for the router. Put the encapsulation here. Usually we leave the, if it's VLAN 10, we do the physical name, G0 slash 0, but then we do dot whatever VLAN number is, so dot ten, dot twenty, dot thirty. Okay. Then we put encapsulation dot one Q and we actually put the VLAN we're going to carry just to keep it simple. And then again, usually this subnet is usually the same number as the VLAN. Again, to keep it simple. All right. So then we go over here to uh, G0 slash zero dot thirty. Same thing. Each VLAN needs its own sub interface. Each sub interface needs an IP address as well. Don't forget that. Okay, and then we configure the actual port that is leaving on the switch to go to the router. Put it in switch more. Put, put it in switch port mode trunk, and you can also put switch port trunk allow VLANs like we did in last uh, chapter to allow the specific VLANs back and forth across the trunk link. Okay, so and of course no shutdown. You gotta turn it on. All right, that's a common uh, misstep here because the port between the link lights between the switch and the router will be green if you turn them both on but remember green lights do not always mean connectivity so you got to have the switch port mode trunk on now we're going to practice all this stuff in your labs this uh, chapter we've got three coming up we've got two that i've got videos for and then a, a um, integration chat skills integration challenge make sure you email me if you're struggling with the skills integration challenges i've seen a lot of people getting less than you know, satisfactory grades on those. So make sure you email me ahead of time. Send me your packet tracer file. I can create your short video, shoot it back to you, maybe to show you where you went wrong. All right. And again, make sure you're watching those videos as well for the lab assignments because they are get. I mean, if you follow those, you're going to get 100 every single time. All right. It may take you, you know, eight to 15 minutes to watch a video, but you'll get 100. So it'll take, save you a lot of time rather than struggling through it. And you can open it up on your phone while you're working on your PC or open it up in another browser window or something like that. So if you got any more questions on chapter five, this is the basis of what we're doing this chapter. Um, then let me know, shoot me an email, send me a, uh, send me an email, call me on my office phone or stop by if you're ever on campus.